when you've got a vehicle that just speaks of off-roading, of adventuring, of traveling, you've got to get out into the country. You can't just sit in the city. Even though this one in particular is what you call the city version. So what am I talking about here? The great big Toyota Land Cruiser, the LC300. But this is the luxury, can I call it city version, the ZX. So look at it from the front. You'll see a bit of bling. So you've got a lot of chrome and silver on the grille, on the front end. And what is really important is to note why I say it's the city version because it's got quite a low lip spoiler down at the bottom. So, it's got all the hardware, it's got all the capability, it's got all the tricks and everything else to go off-roading. But be aware of that front end. Be aware of overhangs, things like that, before you do it. If you're going to want to go off-road, have a look behind you. We brought along Brute Brother, let's call him. Because this is the GR Sport version. Blacked out everywhere, you can see. Look at the difference on the grille, for example, that blacked out effect. And look how much more clearance you've got, particularly, which is where it makes such a difference. It means you can take that one off-road. That one's also got 18-inch wheels compared to 20 inches on this one. 20 inches are not really ideal for going off-road, I'm sorry to tell you. You've still got massive clearance on the wheel arches. You've got the ability for articulation. You've got all of that. But just be careful. Too much chrome on this one, things like that, for pure off-roading. But who boy, look inside. Check out what you get inside this one. Obviously, you get electric seats for driver and passenger. But the cream interior, the beautiful lush plush inside it's really classy isn't it we'll have a look properly at the interior a bit later in the video so don't worry too much now but look at the length of the rear door this always tells a story as far as i'm concerned and shows you space don't forget the running board by the way grab handles for shorties like me to get in and out of the vehicle and do things like that just jump here and show you quickly and we'll bring the camera. This particular one's really kitted out for the kids, for entertainment while you're traveling on the open road, on the long road. And of course the center console over here. Just look at this. Aircon obviously with zones, with everything that you want. Even heating and cooling for the rear seats over here. And USBs for Africa and even HDMI. Important features air vents in the roof for example all those sort of things now remembering that the land cruiser is actually a seven seater so bring the camera here quickly and look at this yank on the lever does that does that and again that's how you climb in if you really want to access what i always call the cheap seats right in the rear it is actually a seven seater you can see the seats are down but don't worry about that not serious right now come around to the rear big substantial chrome but it's got plenty clearance at the back interestingly enough pop open over here obviously gigantic boot space as a five-seater I'll show you here quickly because of course being the luxury version you're not expected to up, lift or drop these extra two seats in the back on your own. That would be too much effort for the owner of a vehicle like this. What you do is you press the button there and look at that, it comes up again. The middle seat is set at the wrong angle, etc. So it's not working properly, but I think you get the idea and you can see what I'm talking about, how they work. And you just press button up or down, simple as that. There's even USBs for those seats. It's got it all in that sense. You really don't have to worry about anything. And you've even got a serious 12 volt, 220 volt, 220 volt plug over there. Because if you're going to go camping or 
traveling like that for your fridge because you've got to have the cold beers when you get there, haven't you? All these are important. Now, this one we're driving right now is powered by petrol engine because you've got the option, petrol or diesel. Take your choice. Interestingly, brute brother behind me or in front of me right now behind the camera is the diesel. This is the petrol. I tested the stripped out GXR diesel version not long ago, so I asked for the petrol this time. V6, 3.5 liters, 305 kilowatts, 650 newton meters. It's a land cruiser on steroids. I think that's what we're going to call it. It's capable of anything. You can take it almost anywhere. Brute brother, you can take anywhere. That's the difference if you want. So you've got to decide what are your needs, what are your requirements, and what you're going to do with this vehicle. Let's have some fun with it, and let's check out the inside more thoroughly in a few moments. If you've got a big brute of a traveling adventure vehicle, you've got to bring it out into the country. You can't limit it to city life, even though this particular L, version... L, 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 I can't, I can't. We have to talk about the elephant in the room. This is take two of these cars. Okay. And the reason it's take two is that we had an Android failure. And yesterday, we took these to ADA, and we put them through a little bit of an off-road course. And I'm yeah. showing you the GR version. So you can see that's actual mud. It's, it's not real mud. No, so so mud, mud. And we did spray it on. And we did not spray it on. We okay. gathered that mud, you and I, ourselves at ADA. Okay, we each took a turn. And specifically, that that's what I want to get to. Because the Android gods somehow favor you. I don't know how they get this right, but they favor you. Okay. In terms of the fact that when we went to ADA, they have this dip. And the dip, dear viewers, is simply where you drive down into mud, and then you try and get up the other side. Okay. Now, I, I hate the fact that you use the word try. Physics. Well, it, you did no, try. You, 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 try, you to, did you're try. To, uh, you did you try. You are trying to insinuate something, aren't you? You did try three or four times. <laughs> and physics, as I was saying, is was the enemy here because when you have mud and and wetness there is just no way that you're going to haul two and a half tons up a 45 degree slope but and hang you have, on you the, as 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 you proved yes but you, the, on I, three showed, occasions. I showed you the exact route that was the difference because and, you followed me and when i did it i just went through boom it's easy yes, as, because i'd shown you where as easy go. as pie and unfortunately, that side of the video is the one that we lost to the Android gods. <laughs> <laughs> I am so cross, I cannot describe how, how, how annoyed I am over, over that fact. So I, just wanted to, I wanted to point that out just whilst you were rambling on about the, the, about the, the, the other Toyota. Yeah, about yeah I don't mind what, you doing that. What's important when we're driving these cars off-road is that uh, technique... Technique. No, but the difference technique. is, you can say what you want, you don't have proof. <laughs> it's sitting in the digital multiverse as, as ones and zeros somewhere lost so, and, and, and dear, heaven knows. Dear viewers, do you believe me or Leadfoot? Your choice. Well, in this particular instance, I have to say, having a Leadfoot helps you get out of that particular obstacle. It actually did work for it, you for it, once. It was what, it's what it was, was what was, was. I've got to admit. And I have to say that, I mean, throughout that, that obstacle course, and I mean, one is, it's easy to set up something where cars cannot get through it. Mm. It's difficult to set up something that's a challenge for cars, but that still demonstrates the capability of what the car is actually capable of doing. And I think on those obstacle courses, you're going to encounter things that you would never normally encounter in your 4x4 off-roading, unless you're really going overland. If you're a dedicated 4x4 and you really into technical 4 by 4 you may find some of that. Yeah. 99.9% .9 of owners of whether it's one of these or an old 4 by 4 or a little Suzuki Jimny are not going to come close to what we did yesterday. No, agreed. Agreed. That's it. It's, it's, as you say, it's technical, which is, which, yeah. was, which was the fun part of it. But and that is where, if you want to go do it, I'm going to give Alan's tip of the day. If you want to get into that, please go and do an advanced driving 4x4 course. Just go to ADA and they'll take you give through Give them it. a call. 100%. Give a hind at ADA a call. Contact him. He'll set you up and 
you will learn the true way to do it. And the one, the one thing we did also lose on the video was just the extent of wheel travel that this car has. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. I mean, so when, when, when we were going over the, the ups and downs, and you can see me now in the, in the, in the picture of the car, how embarrassing, terrible footage. Um, <laughs> this gap here extends to it, it probably doubled. Proportions that are it probably just was something staggering. like that at it, certain it's, points. It's, it's unreal how, 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 how long the suspension travel is on these cars. But that is obviously a Land Cruiser for you. That's the Land Cruiser. Uh, the other thing I must mention, and we'll show it when we see the inside of the car, is that little trick button. When you go into crawl mode. Well, in fact, we can do that right now. Look, let me open up the car. Right. And, no, but you, you, and, you lock, and you lock the rear wheels. You lock the rear wheel. Well, it alternates locking wheel for a tighter turn. Correct. To reduce the turning circle. And that, that button is... That is incredible. It's in crawl mode right there. Yeah. So you put the thing into crawl mode. And then this innocuous looking button here right. is what you use to increase it or decrease your turning circle. By right. a massive amount, it locks the rear wheels at... Exactly. Various locks, unlocks, so you can and make, slips you can and make, whatever. You can make turns that actually you would ordinarily would not think you would make. Correct. And that, that in itself was interesting mm. because I actually buggered it up on that turn. You, know, you did. Because, I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. There's no evidence of that, Alan. I will. As again, who do you believe? Happily. This happily, innocent face or him? <laughs> you can't see me. I'm keeping it that way deliberately. The, the interesting thing is, is that, as I say, you, you, you instinctively go out to where you think you should be turning to make the turn. Yeah. And you actually need to do it earlier because you've got the, 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 Correct. the, the smaller turn. The circle. other thing to point out, you mentioned the articulation and the amount of extra. Yes. Was on that last little section at ADA. Where you're going up Where you're down. going through those. Yeah. The, well, in, in Joburg, they're potholes. Well, yes. In fact, they're dongers. Yes. But where, when I was filming you doing it, Outside, you're doing that kind of thing from the outside, but on the yet inside, on you're not the inside moving. You are... I was, I was actually commenting that if I had yeah. a, if mm. I had a Marie Antoinette champagne glass, I wouldn't have actually spilled a drop. Well, there and, you go. So, and and, and, and when mm. you're talking about the luxury spec, even mm. though this is the off-road version, yeah. it has got 95% of everything the VX has got. Oh, there yeah. are one or two little touches. I mean, you can see that this, the seats here are two-tone. Um, Basically, all the features that the VX has, this one's got. We've mm. got, we've got cooled and heated, heated seats, rear seats yeah. at the rear. You, know, you, so haven't, you haven't got the HDMI at the back. We don't have the, the HDMI screens, for, the, but wow. for the children because they'll be screaming because you're going off road and yeah, yeah. doing strange things. And you've and got the electric, the electric seats at the rear. Have you still got the electric seats in the rear of this? One? We've still got the electric seats in the rear. And the one oh, thing I want go. to point out mm. is that. In case you want to activate the rear seats from the back doors, there are actually additional buttons, over buttons there. on either yes. side of the car that okay, you well can now, use to activate the rear seats. Seeing as we haven't got a parcel shelf, you can actually activate this one. Let's do it. And up it comes. A bit slow for my liking, but... And these, are, these rear seats are also reclinable. Now, Bring the camera around because let's do another test. Let's see what the room's like in the rear. Well, for you, there's plenty. For me, not for you. Okay, I must say, not as much clearance while I'm climbing in as in some competitors, but still. Well, you've got 30 seconds of, of viewing of your butt there. Right. Do you want to push that, drop that seat back down? Can I? Yep. Yes, it really is four degrees outside right now, early morning. But you know what? You can't exactly be that uncomfortable when I've got the steering wheel heating on and I've got my butt warmers on. Yeah, the heated seat as well. So you know what, when you're in a car like this, doesn't matter how uncomfortable it is outside, how cold it is outside, you can make yourself a lot more comfortable than you really need to be or have to be. And doesn't that make a difference? Starting off behind the wheel as I always do, let's look at fuel consumption. Remembering this is the petrol, 12.6 litres per 100 k's, I've done 420 k's so far. 
What I am confused by is it's a 110 litre tank. It's telling me there's only 191 Ks left, which doesn't quite add up. But anyway, let's leave it for now. But I am a touch confused. You can't see it now, but there is a full heads up display in front of me as well, which is a nice feature. Of course, on the steering wheel, you've got your adaptive cruise control, you've got your lane keep assist, you've got all those things. And talking the lane keep assist, here's one of my winges, Alan's picky point on this car. It's vicious. It cuts, it's too intrusive. It pulls you back with a yank of note and, and also breaks the car. It breaks you. So it's a little bit irritating at times and you certainly need to be used to it and know what it's about otherwise you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble quite honestly but anyway you've got this lovely big screen over here that does everything tells you everything press the menu button there you go press the map button there you go it's got it all i don't have to tell you anything about it over here i have shown you previously you've got of course steering wheel heating which i've used the last two mornings it's lovely butt warmers both sides and coolers just in case you want so it's got all those kind of features which are really useful hasn't got a hat stand for my hat though when i'm doing cap because i'm in a four by four but, but you can put no it, it will not i will not squash my hat into a little cool box it does cool by the way in there it's not so little look how deep this thing goes it's deep but it's still not big it enough goes, for my hat it goes all the way down william it's not big enough for my hat okay but it's deep for a bottle of champagne and okay I, maybe and maybe. what i also found mm. is have you seen this little insert mm -hmm. It goes into your cup holder, okay. so you can adjust for when you're having a small coffee versus when you're having a big is coffee. Is that what that was for? That's what this okay. is for. Right, thank I'll you for interrupting cool. me, William. Sorry. Okay, right. Now, let's look at the crucial points of this vehicle. And I'm going to turn off the engine because it'll probably guzzle more fuel in the meantime. <laughs> let's just have a look. The 10-speed automatic gearbox. Smooth as silk. Oh, come on. You don't even feel a shift at any point no. in time. Amazingly, you can click it across to a manual mode, but I'm pretty surprised that ain't added flappy pedals. Well, that is one of the things that I would like, obviously. I know you would. In, in, what, By the way, this is lead foot interrupting as usual. What's, what's interesting about mm. the manual mm. mode is, is a full manual mode. When mm. you're in there, it will not kick the, kick the okay. motor down, which is, right. which is really nice. Okay. Now, a little hidey hole there which is quite useful and interesting. And you've got your USBs and 12 volt, etc. And it's a USB-C. USB-C and a normal USB on that side and a 12 volt. So you've got, you're catering for everybody. You've got plenty of them over there. Your you've got your wireless station. inductive charging over there. Which you can turn off and on. Yeah, exactly. Then let's talk because this is where it all comes this into the, the game. This yeah. is the kit that you pay the money this for. This is what you pay the money for. You've got your drive modes. You've got your selectable drive modes on the automatic transmission. We all know sport mode, blah, 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 etc. 100%. Then you've got mode select. This is for off-roading. Yeah. So you've got mud, you've got sand, you've got, again, all the possible modes. This is the one here. Remembering, obviously, this is a permanent four-wheel drive. Yes. So you just push down and you go into high range. Correct. Nice and simple. Low range. Low, high, low, yeah, yeah, between. Nice and simple, and like I've got to say, the Defender which took a while to get into your off-road modes. Sure. So let's just keep that in mind. But now, there's a few little buttons there. That one over there does what, William? Activates your front cameras. Uh -huh. As you can see also the, yeah. side, the side mirror cameras. Okay, because I didn't show you, but obviously the screen, and this was my co complaint on the GXR, that didn't have a rear camera remember um, and didn't have level. the full yes. the entry level look that's how they saved the money to cut the price on the on that one so i'm not there's, moaning there's about a it big difference in price massive yeah. uh, Six hundred thousand almost yeah. almost yeah. yeah so they had to save money somewhere that they, they did compromise on the camera system sure so there's where you fiddle with the cameras this one over here activates the crawl mode and it does crawl it does and what's amazing about the crawl mode is when you activate the crawl mode you then use this one and you've got three or four speed selections in crawl mode. I didn't even do that. I've just put it in crawl mode and I crawled. Right. No, you can actually adjust. There's about four different speed settings for the crawl mode. But in crawl mode, you can crawl over anything. Absolutely. No, no, no. Come on. It's I phenomenal. mean, that, 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 that's ridiculous, in fact. Then two very important buttons there. That one's your diff lock. Yeah. That one is that trick button we spoke about. For your turning circle. Your turning circle, to reduce the turning circle, lock, unlock the rear wheels as you're turning, etc. It's, it's just magic. And, and when it's engaged, you know, because you can actually hear the car clunking you do. and funking. Clunk, 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 yeah, clunk, yeah, clunk. Yeah. I mean, and the you first, almost think something's broken. The first time <laughs> you encounter it, you actually do think you've yeah. broken something. Yeah, yeah. Because it does make funny noises. 
but but oh it's effective all part, all part yeah. of the part of the fun so now the point of the zx model you're in sheer luxury you've got it all look at that dual level glove box that is whacking Leadfoot's knees over there when you open it but it's massive. It's massive. But then again, everything about this car is massive. That's the point. And did, did you show the fact that you can open the center console from both sides? Uh, I, I didn't, but there you go. Thank how, you for that. I know. Nice. I find that very interesting. How clever is that? Yeah. And it's so simple to... to I mean, to nobody's read. done it before. Oh, oh, now I've got you in picture. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there you've seen the interior. As I say, sheer class. On the GR model, it's missing one or two little things, but they're minor. I have to talk about these buttons. Yes, what about the these buttons? The fact that we don't have a volume knob for your control just means mm. you've got to use these to increase and No, increase you can use the volume. ones on the steering wheel. And you can use the ones on the steering, but they're just a little bit slow. So when okay. you're using a full volume, you want to turn it down for mm. the traffic officer. Okay. He's pulled you over for, for, for having such a nice car. Well, It mm. takes you a little bit of time to get to it. But the feel of these buttons is unbelievable. The quality they, they like, here And they click is, almost. Is, is, it, it's a click. It's, it's not a, just a it's press. It's a yeah. tangible, mm. mechanical, yes. engineered mm. marvel. It is, it is beautifully done. And, and you can see, these will never, ever, ever mm. break. Look, this again is why you're paying. This is what you're paying. 1.8 million, million rand. I mean, look at all, you got acres and acres of space behind us here. I mean, look at this. Practically. It's crazy. In fact, we didn't show earlier, but you've even got vents underneath the seat in the middle over there, which is obviously for the heating and cooling and, and you, things like that. I mean, it's just... You almost need a walkie-talkie to talk to your rear passengers. Uh, so far yeah, away. yeah, you do. Well, you've seen it. Now you know what we're talking about. Quite impressive. I mean, there are one or two little things that we've had our picky points on. Ah, but they're niggles. they niggles. they stupid little things. But I have to sometimes comment occasionally and find something. Otherwise, you'll think Toyota paid me to make this video. And I have a niggle. I have a niggle. You have a niggle. What? when I'm driving, that bonnet vibrates. Because they've, mm. they've tried to save 5 kilos or 10 kilos on the bonnet weight. So the bonnet is incredibly thin. Yes. So it actually vibrates. Okay. And if you've got the sun coming into mm. you, it, 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 I find it it's something that just well, catches I my just eye I just noticed it was then. shimmering, uh, especially when there was dew on it in the morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, it like quite a shimmering effect. It was quite mm. interesting. Anyway, other than, foot, that, other than that, nothing to complain about. We both expressed our choices between the petrol and the diesel. Let's just leave it at that. Absolutely. Thanks, Al. We have to push something. So, okay, as I was saying, mm. it, it, it definitely consumes more parking space than, mm. than most. Yeah, well, anyway, not serious. It's, uh, but I must say, the only thing I've, I've commented before that surprises me on this vehicle, and I'm talking on both ve versions, is the lack of a panoramic roof. I consider that a feature for which I would pay actual money. Just Picture game viewing in a vehicle like this, something like that. I just think, especially on the ZX, it's I'm lost, very surprised it's not there. It's a lost opportunity because, you know, you can have lions floating around the car and if you had a sunroof, you could throw the kids out. And, mm, and Something like that. Yeah. Or well, I'd throw you out. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you need an ejector seat, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's one little thing. Uh, look, I've got to find something. Okay. I have to I say, really this do. car, I was also trying to, mm. trying, to, trying to go through niggles. The one niggle mm. I had is that you have to put it in park to be able to adjust the memory seat function. Okay. Which is a bit, which is a bit annoying. But yeah. You get used to that very uh, quickly. Look, it's not, I wouldn't say it's serious. It but, does, it does mm. everything well. It does nothing badly. Yeah, yeah, the no, sound no. system is Well, JBL great. sound system it's, that you can speak about, it's, yeah? It's, 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 yeah? It's good. It's, but I wouldn't say it's exceptional. Um, you know, it's, it's competent mm. and, and, and at this pricing point, it's going to be more than enough for, for, for anybody who's listening to their music as I do at full volume. Yeah, and, as I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And everything else in the car mm. works and works well. And you've left out the one crucial, crucial thing. It's a Toyota. That's the key. Isn't it? That's the key. We were actually discussing resale values um, last night mm. over dinner. And one of the things that came up that, 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 that was made as a comment and made me think a little bit about it was the fact that if you have a problem with a Toyota, well, it doesn't matter where you are in the country. I, it'll, I, it'll, it'll get solved because you can I get a I commonly say there's a dealer under every bush. Correct. Correct. And I think that's mm. got a lot to do with the resale value because when you think about it, if you're going to be buying a second-hand mm. car, the one thing you want to be sure of is that if something breaks, you can get well, it sorted. But I don't, not even just a second car, a new car, just as much. Well, I, this yeah. is a Land Cruiser. Yeah. We, mm. we automatically assume it's going to go for the next 15 years without ever giving a problem and until it reaches a million kilometers. This one 
and you could drive across Africa. And I think you without could without any preparation, without any doing, without anything. And by the way, this one's got the diesel motor as well. Jump which in and go. You would definitely choose to go across Africa. Yeah. 225 kilowatts, but 700 newton meters. No, it's crazy. It's uh, insane. And I haven't even mentioned 10 speed automatic gearbox. It holds, it holds beautifully. And yeah. it doesn't feel as if the car weighs two and a half tons until you put it into a tight corner. But mm. then you notice it, it, it weighs two and a half tons. Yeah, but then, um, listen, but if you can't work out what you're driving, well, then more before the you, you do those things, more then more the you. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. Absolutely. It, I, for me, this. I, as much as I love the petrol, and I really, really do love that that that, that extra grunt that the petrol has, mm. it's effortless, and that thing will just pick up its skirts and haul. Yeah, but it makes no sense. But it makes no sense. This is the correct one to have. Sorry, I mean... Uh, I'd still buy the petrol, but this is the correct one to yeah, have. Yeah, And look, fuel consumption, let's talk. I'm showing 12.6 liters per 100. Ha! On the petrol. Ha! The rolls have changed. No, they haven't. What are you showing on the diesel? 11.1. You should be, ah, come on. Combination, combination of city and Yeah, no, no, no mind you. Big combination. But I've done 400 odd Ks, so it's a fair reflection. Yeah. 12.6. Yeah. Uh, a renowned magazine showed 14.5. Yeah, so as, as usual, you're below average. I'm I don't way know what, below. I don't uh, know what they show for the diesel. And they showed 10.5, if I recall. You could, you could probably get to 10.5 if yeah. you drove it with a feather. I would um, hate to know what you do in the petrol one, though. I would do, what did you do? 16, 12, 17, where 12, would you be? 12.6. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. I'd be at... 15 minimum. No, I'd be at 12.8, 12. 12.9, 12. Mm. 12. maybe. Somebody 18. was telling me, who was I talking to yesterday, who said, oh, did you do better than 17? I'll ask, wow. Yeah, I'll apparently ask, that's what they were doing. I'll ask her to very nicely if they can give that one to me just for a petrol test for a week. Let's see what they say. <laughs> with the price of petrol, I think they may have a bit of an issue with this. Well, this, this is, the petrol version is one of those where you say, give it to me for a week, but give me a petrol card with it, please. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and when you pull up to the pump, you ask the petrol pump attendant, please says, turn the engine off so you're getting ahead of me. Yeah, and then he says, can I get bank clearance before for I fill your, this tank? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> pre-authorization to fill your tank. How big is the tank on that? 110 litres. 110 litres. On both of them. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a bull. At 25 bucks a litre. That's, that's a bit of a bull. I did that. My Land Rover had 160 litres. And that was yeah. painful. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I think right. I think I think there's nothing really to fault the Toyotas on, and and we are grasping at straws, you know. So what we have trying, We've left trying to figure out. We have left something. Where we are with it, and the bucks. One point eight bar. One point eight, whichever one of these two you want to choose. It's putting it up in the in the category where there's a lot of competition now. Oh yeah. And yeah. and and it's going to come down to what is it you want, as we always say. Uh, if you want a brutal big mm. off-road cruiser, this is the machine. I mean, this is what Land Cruiser stands for. Um, whether you want something a little bit more high-tech and, 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 and maybe a bit more exciting, possibly. Yeah, Land Rover. Yeah, look, if you're going to go off-road and you're going to go, pro um, and now I'm talking proper off-roading, it's between this and the Defender. Yeah, that's right. I okay. was about to say there's two contenders. Or the Ineos Grenadier that's coming. When it comes. Yeah. But... As great as the Merc BMWs, et cetera, et cetera, in this category are, they can go off-road. They're capable. Yeah. But they're not like this. No. They're really not quite the same as this. Yeah. And they'll probably throw even more luxury than the ZX version at you for similar money. But you wouldn't want to take them on a technical off-road course. Well, as you say, it's, it's, it's a case of line them all up, mm. pick one and say, we'll see you in Cairo. Which one are you going to pick? Yeah. And, 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 that, and that's always the question. I mean, I'll, I'll, see, you in, I'll see you there in the Defender all, every time. Um, it, you, it's, you, you will choose a Land Cruiser, I know, and, and maybe someone else will pick mm. one of the others. And, and it, it would be a tough choice between the Cruiser and the Defender. I've got to tell we, you, it would be a very tough choice. What we should do is you should, you mm. know, just get Toyota and get Land Rover and mm. get Merck and BMW and Audi all together. Let's have a race. Where? How much fun? From Tomorrow. here to Cairo, yeah. How much fun would that okay. be? Okay, <laughs> your next task. Set I believe, it up. Oh, I believe <laughs> that the roads now are, you can actually go almost completely well, Kingsley tarred. Kingsley Holgate has just left on his completely 40th tarred. expedition. You know that. 40th? Yeah. Man is a machine. And all up Africa, across, up Europe, up to Scandinavia. He, he left from Agullis, which is, of course, the southernmost point of Africa, and he's going to the northernmost point of Europe. 
thought you said he was going to the North Pole for a minute. Well, it is. It's is, in is the it, Arctic Circle. It, it's it, actually in the Arctic Circle. Is it a defender he's taking? Uh, yeah, they, I think they're using three defenders. It'll get there. I would think so. Yeah, it'll get there. Yeah, two, two mild hybrids anyway, and one diesel. Let's, let's, let, we're off topic yeah. again. How does this always happen to us? And then, yeah, okay. back to the Toyota. Yeah. Um, so, as I say, uh, uh, a, a supremely competent vehicle. I've got nothing to fault it on, no. genuinely. I've I would, got mine and niggles, but nothing really to fault it on. I would seriously, obviously, take uh, the GR Sport. Well, I would, let, me, let me rephrase. I love my luxury, obviously, okay? I like the extra luxuries and the extra bits. But if I was buying a Land Cruiser, I mean, I'm a motoring journo. Who's got 1.8 million? But if I was buying a Land Cruiser, there's no doubt you've got to go diesel. Yeah. And I would just feel a tiny bit shortchanged by the lack of off-road ability if I took a ZX. I, on the other hand, would not. Um, as I say, the diesel for me is the correct choice. Yeah. If the diesel mm. engine came mm. in that version... It does. You can, you can take it, it yeah. It's, it, the, mm. VX, the VX diesel. Mm. That, for me, is the package. I don't go off-road all that much. And I know, but I'm saying I would I, just feel... I know. I, I, the thing is that with that car is mm. I know I could. Yeah. And, and, that, and that maybe is enough. Uh, I'm just saying I would feel that little bit shortchanged. Yeah. That I don't have the off-road ability of this one. On that, that one. one. That's Fair what enough. I'm saying. Fair enough. Uh, it's probably a silly point, but you, we're just making personal comments you, here. You, you probably, exactly, you probably could have just add to the price and they just want to keep the pricing yeah, wherever, yeah. wherever, they're, it's they're, just, you know, wherever that particular mix is. That yeah. front, that lower front spoiler, etc., etc. you're not going to risk whacking that thing off because you feel like going off-road. I wonder how long it's going to be before someone actually just whips it off and puts another, another front end on well, aftermarket. There we go. Yeah. Next option. Yeah. Next option. Wonderful. All right, Al, let's yeah. leave it there. That's it. Fantastic. Okay, Al. All right, now. We're done. Now are you going to get out the car? Yeah, now I'm going to get out, but I don't want to hassle the people in the middle row. So if you're only using one rear seat. There isn't anyone in the middle row. Oh, hey, for points of demonstration. I'm point sorry. Point of demonstration. This, this, this video guy's a little bit slow. Yeah, William, really. Okay, <laughs> so. So, let's see you get out. Another, obviously, you can only do this with one rear seat in place. Sure. Well, this is dignified. Highly dignified and grateful, my ah, senior your knees. But there you go. Done. Right. And let me put it now. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor. See you next time. Ciao, ciao.